How's it going guys? Winter Kills here. Welcome back to a brand new deck profile. This time around we're going to be taking a look at Speedroids here in the month of May. Uh, and uh, wanted just to go ahead and show you guys where I'm sort of at with this deck with the current card pool that we have here in the TCG. Um, this deck, uh, I, I, I talk about a lot, at least on stream sometimes, this deck is like... It's so close to just being a lot better than it is right now, whether that makes it competitive uh, or just somewhat more decent. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but this, this deck is just missing a little something. Um, I think this deck's biggest issue is primarily the uh, luck factor uh, involved with some of your better cards, uh, like your rubber band shooter, um, primarily being the, the biggest bottleneck I think this deck has currently. Uh, and sometimes long drawn out combos often only result in one major boss monster, uh, which in today's meta really doesn't always cut it. Uh, but in some cases, it very well could. You just never know. Um, but uh, this is my current take on the deck before we get the uh, new Wind Charmer uh, cards, I believe, the one that lets you discard a wind itself and another wind to like add a wind monster with 1500 less defense from your deck to your hand. I'll put that card up on the screen here if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, but when we get that car in Speedroid Car Turbo, I feel like this deck will be a lot better than it is now, uh, but I feel like I'm happy with this list. I made some slight, slight tweaks, um, added in some cards that I feel like make more sense for my play style specifically, and of course we'll explain all that when we get into the breakdown, but right now we're going to go ahead and get ready to go into the profile here, and before we do, I want to mention a quick shout out to our uh, sponsor at Imperium Duels, provider of this amazing play map and many others on their site, two-player cloth playmats, uh, amazing quality. Uh, check them out if you haven't. Same thing with these sleeves here, these two-toned uh, black and red sleeves. Same thing with these, the wine on the inside and the white on the back. Very, very nice sleeves. Some of the best hands down that I've ever used. They've got deck boxes, dice, stickers, all that stuff. You name it, check it out down in the description below. And using that discount code, we're going to kill 10 off to save 10% off your entire order at checkout. And, of course, if you guys are buying anything on TCG Player, do not forget to use my affiliate link down in the description below as uh, that will help support the channel directly. And if you guys want to get in per se, uh, early deck profiles or behind the scenes photos, uh, you know, bloopers, a spot for your name at the end of all my videos, feel free to uh, hit that join button down below for more information and becoming a member of the channel today. But either way, getting started with the deck profile here, we have three Speedroid Horse Stilts following that, the new uh, Speedroid Marble Machine from Dual Overload. Following that, we have three Speedroid Take Tom Borg, two copies of Speedroid Rubber Band Plane. Uh, then we have two copies of the Speedroid Red Eye Die, and then two copies of Speedroid Denden Daiko Duke, and one copy of the Speedroid Double Yo Yo, followed by that, the one copy of the Terra Top. That's it for all the Speedroid monsters, and from here we'll go into our supporting wind monsters, which consists of three Battle Wasps Sting the Poison, one Battle Wasp Pin the Bullseye, two copies of Wind Witch Snowbell, and one copy of Tempest Dragon Ruler of Storms. And that rounds out our monsters. Now into the spells, we have three copies of Speed Recovery, aka Monster Reborn for Speedroids. Then we have three copies of Called by the Grave, two copies of World Legacy Succession, two copies of the controversial Speed Lift, uh, one copy of Monster Reborn, one one for one, one Foolish Burial, one Pot of Avarice, one Into the Void, and one Upstart Goblin. And that rounds out the spells, jumping into the extra deck really fast. Here we have the Almighty Cosmic Blazar Dragon, uh, one Stardust Warrior, one High Speed Roid Kite Drake, two copies of Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, one Clear Wing Synchro Dragon, one Clear Wing Fast Dragon, one Wind Pegasus Adagnister, uh, one Stardust Charge Warrior, one High Speed Roid Chimbara, one High Speed Roid Hagoita, one High Speed Roid Puzzle, one Martial Metal Marcher, and two copies of that High Speed Roid Rubber Band Shooter. So that is it for the main deck. And the extra deck. Now we're going to go through a more detailed look at all the cards within the main and extra deck uh, during the deck breakdown. So stick around for that. All right. So now for the deck breakdown here, we're going to go through the deck profile again, but everything is going to be separated via card rolls. We're going to start with starters, superior extenders, additional extenders. From there, we'll look at defense, engine requirements, uh, and placeholder cards, etc., etc. Then we'll look into the extra deck. So. Looking at our starter cards, the first one I want to talk about here is the Speedroid Horse Stilts. Um, this card, uh, I'll, first I'll preface uh, talking about this card with saying that I did want to try a build that prioritized Marble Machine and the Sting the, the, the Poison uh, as your main six normal summons. Because beforehand, playing, you know, three Horse Stilts and like two Yo-Yo just felt like way, way too many normal summons, even with the fact that Rubber Band Shooter... Uh, essentially is a brilliant fusion, gives you an additional normal summon. It just felt like still way, 
way too many normal summons. I mean, we're talking 3, 6, 9, 10, 11 normal summons. Even with the chance of double normal summon, it just felt like a little too much for me. And then I'd rather, you know, make room for other cards that offered up other utilities. Um, but Horse Stilts is a bit important, uh, primarily for some of the better combos in this deck, because it helps reduce the randomness of Rubber Band Shooter. Uh, rubber Band Shooter, oftentimes the best thing is to send off Rubber Band Shooter, uh, or at least when you use the Banish, the Synchro Effect is to get uh, the Terror Top with the Yo-Yo. And ideally, the, the ideal combination is you get Yo-Yo and the, uh, the Terror Top goes to the Grape. And you additional normal the Yo-Yo to bring back the Terror Top, but what if you do if you get the uh, Terror Top in your hand? Well, having uh, a higher chance of seeing Horse Stilts, uh, it allows it to be sort of a, uh, a card that can fix your hand, uh, essentially. So... Um, I think Horse Stills is important for that. Not only can it help get two wins on board uh, to be able to make Rubber Band Shooter, which is basically the heart and soul of this deck, uh, at least with all the testing that I've done. Uh, it helps set up a lot of plays. Um, Horse Stills is great in that sense, but also in the sense of being a card that can fix hands uh, when optimal, unoptimal situations arise, uh, if that makes any sense. And it also has the other effect, um, which is the main reason I'm playing Tempest. It says you can banish this card from your graveyard uh, to basically send one wind monster from your deck to the graveyard. Uh, except the turn that it was sent to the graveyard. Um, but it just gives you the chance to get to a free extender like Tempest, which is a very, very powerful card. So, uh, Horse Stills, very, very versatile card all around. I think playing three is fine. Uh, and then moving on here, three uh, copies of Marble Machine. Uh, I found that Marble Machine, uh, essentially, is a worse Terror Top. Uh, I've, come to, I've come to realize that this card is a worse Terror Top. Uh, it's more of a power crept, not power crept Terror Top, but a, a dumbed down Terror Top, I guess I should say. Because I don't think we're getting Terror Top back to 3 anytime soon. So this is sort of like a, you know, it'll have to do for now type thing. Uh, because when it is normal summon, you can basically activate this fact to add a Speedroid monster from your deck to your hand. Also, you can add special monsters this turn except for Wind Monsters. So that's completely fine. Uh, this grabs you Take Time board, you Special to the board. And it's basically, in a nutshell, like you're resolving a Terror Top. Although this one just requires, it has to be your normal summon. Uh, where it is Terror Top. Uh, you know, you only have the special one while you control no monsters, etc, etc. So this card is a bit of a fix uh, for the lack of Terror Top. Um, I do like it. Again, it is a normal summon, though. That's the one thing you do have to keep in mind. So it's a good searcher card. Uh, and then the engine that I still feel like I am the most fond of uh, with this deck going for it is the three copies of Bad Wasp Sting the Poison. Uh, this card, of course, is an inherent starter card. It helps get our engine going for a couple of reasons. Uh, I feel like this is the most versatile uh, starter card in the entire deck, which is why, is why I love playing it. I, I see very few speedroid lists playing this engine, and it confuses me a little bit, because uh, for for starters, um, you know, it searches the pin the bullseye, pull, bullseye uh, and then you can specialize it while you control this, and, uh, you know, get into the rubber band shooter very easily, because you have two wins. Um, but one other thing is it's a starter card that gets you access to Rubber Band Shooter that's also a tuner itself, which means opening this with Speed Lift uh, allows for some very, very productive turns, which uh, this card does not, and neither does this card. Uh, one thing that I found this deck has a major problem with was Speed Lift being such a good card as it is, it's just so hard to uh, consistently resolve, uh, because some of your best starter cards, lo and behold, are not tuner monsters. Um, but Sting the Poison is, and it fills so many, so many roles within the deck. Uh, you know, it helps make Rubber Band Shooter, helps make your speed lift live, and could even, if I was experimenting, uh, not to the greatest effect, but it can help you go into Needle Fiber as well. So, uh, really do like Sting the Poison. And then, of course, uh, one of our better starter cards, if not the best starter card in the entire deck, is the Speed Ride Terror Top. If you control no monsters, you can special on this card from your hand. Uh, when this card is normal or special summon, you can add a Speed Ride monster from your deck to your hand except itself. So you can see basically with that last effect how it's very very similar uh, to the Marble Machine, except the fact that we can special summon while we control the monsters um, and sort of resolve the same effect. So it's very, very nice. Um, but one thing can be said is that uh, it is nice that Marble Machine is a level 2 because it gives us easier access to Marcher uh, without investing any other resources. Um, but Terror Top, of course, fantastic. I don't think it's going anywhere. I think it's staying at one for quite some time. Now, two speed lift. So basically, this card says if you control exactly one tuner, no other monsters. You can special them in one level four lower speed run monster from your deck. Neither player can activate cards or effects when that monster is special summoned. So that last effect, it might seem good, but it's really not that good. Um, because it's preventing you from, you know, opening something like Sting and then speed lifting into Terror Top to get a surge. Because Terror Top will not be able to activate its effect on summon. Um, but you'll be able to at least get Take Time for directly from the deck, uh, and then turn it into Dendaiko Duke, whatever it may be. So I really do like 
Lift only though in combination with Sting the Poison. Every other scenario just seems very lackluster. Forcing you to normal summon things per se like, um, what is it? Uh, like your, your level one tuners, like your Red Eye Die, your Dendaiko Duke, uh, or your Glass Bell. It just seems so, so incredibly lackluster to have to burn your normal summon on any of those cards just to resolve speed lift. Um, so that's why I like... Uh, if I wasn't playing Sting the Poison, I probably wouldn't play this card at all. That's just my personal opinion. I do not see the value in this card unless you're playing this Battle Wasp engine. So that's my personal opinion. But either way, that's it for the starter cards. Um, and this card in general isn't the greatest starter card, but I'm, I'm listing it as one anyways. Um, just because it, it, it is a starter, but eh, I don't know. It, it, it really... It really depends. Sometimes I feel like it, it fulfills the role of a starter. In some other cases, fulfilling the role as a superior extender, uh, which basically are the cards that help to build, a build upon our starting plays uh, and increase the power level. The activation requirements of these cards may be a little higher than that of starter cards. Uh, obviously, starter cards having very easy activation requirements. Uh, you know, these cards having a bit higher up on the curve of activation requirement cost. Um, so again, I guess Speedlift uh, bleeds into the superior uh, extender category so take that into account um, as to why you probably wouldn't want to play three um, unless your build is just uh, focused around speed lift I guess but either way into the superior extenders now we have three speed red speed right take Tom Borg um, basically if you control a wind monster you can special this card from your hand you contribute this card special on one speed right monster from your hand or from your deck uh, one tuner, speed right tuner monster from your deck. Also, you cannot special summon monsters the rest of the turn except for wind monsters. So, again, we're always getting locked into wind monsters. That's why I've shied away from cards like Needle Fiber. Uh, it's because more often than not, you just, you're just you locked out of those plays. Um, it's it just... And if, if you are getting to Needle Fiber, which you can, I've tried it, um, you're, you're having to go about it in such an awkward way. I just don't really enjoy it. Um, but this card, again, you do require to have a wind on board. Um, so that obviously will require a bit of setup. The activation requirement is a little bit higher than that of something like your horse stilts, your, uh, your sting the poison, uh, your, your terror top, etc, etc. So this is why I'm labeling it as a superior extender. But it does add to the power level of our plays, uh, which is very important to have these extenders because they build upon the power of the deck. Consistency is important, but so is power. Power should be valued in some cases slightly more than consistency, but consistency is still nonetheless very important. But again, take Tom Borg turns itself into any tuner, which is important, because this is a synchro heavy deck, we need access to tuners. Um, and then we have uh, two copies of the rubber band plane. Uh, basically, if a monster is normal special summon your field, except in the damage step, you can special this card from your hand. Also, you cannot special summon monsters this turn, except for wind monsters. Other effect of it, not too relevant if you're going first. Um, you know, the, uh, the attack manipulation effect. And it's only 600 attack, so it's not too big of a deal. Um, but yeah. Rubber band plane, easy to get on the board, uh, helps to uh, just get extra bodies on the board to help synchro with. Because at the end of the day, you, you can recycle a lot of your tuners in this deck very easily. Especially if you take into account the amount of Monster Reborns we're playing. You know, Monster Reborns. Um, you know, giving something for our tuners to work with is very important. So, and uh, rubber band plane does add to that. Uh, and then free real estate here. Speaking of free real estate, um, Wind Witch Snowbell. I, I've seen other people play full Wind Witch Engines which I do not agree with because that locks you into wind synchros completely and your your end board is just crystal wing when I feel like you could just do more with other cards without having that engine restrict you as much as it does. Snowbell, I think, is the best of the best. Um, you could play the level 4 one. Uh, again, that one's just not that great. Yes, it does make speed lift live more often, but uh, I feel like Marble Machine uh, is just better overall. Um, but Snowbell is great. Uh, free level 1 tuners never hurt. Um, they really, really don't, uh, because, you know, you can use this in conjunction with Marble Machine to get into Marcher, this and this to go into, per se, uh, you know, the Charge Warrior to get a draw to help extend it more, uh, or you could use this in combination with any of your level 7 synchros and get into, uh, an indestructible Crystal Wing, which is very, very nice. Um, and then moving on more to some more, ex uh, superior extenders, uh, the Speed Recovery, uh, basically... Target one speedroid monster in your graveyard, special summon it during your main phase, except this turn this card was sent to the graveyard. You can banish this card from your graveyard, then target one speedroid monster in your graveyard and add it to your hand. Uh, so basically, a, a not once per turn monster reborn. Uh, the graveyard effect, we do have to wait on a turn, obviously, but 
Um, it's insane. Uh, if you've seen one or two of these a hand uh, with a really good hand, it does make your hands a lot better. Uh, and this deck does have a very easy time, I would say, in most cases, establishing rubber band shooter, which means in some cases you're at least going to be able to get to a level 7 or 8 synchro, thus, thus as like clear wing or crystal wing or fast dragon. Uh, and recovery just helps so much because a lot of times, a lot of your plays, a lot of your two or three card combos uh, are, are really needing... Uh, extenders in the form of recovery, Monster Born Succession. So that's why you're going to see us playing so many of these Monster Born type cards. Uh, so two Succession, same same thing applies. Uh, you're going to be always getting into our band shooter. If you're not, you're probably losing anyways. Your hand is probably that bad. Uh, so the fact that Succession isn't live isn't making too big of a difference. Uh, Monster Born because just it's Monster Born one for one. Um, this card is. Uh, good as a superior extender, it, it bleeds in a bit to the additional extender category, I guess, but as far as activation requirements are concerned, I, I, I could say it's a, a superior extender, hands down. Getting access again to a speed ride red-eyed die, which is a great extender. Uh, the level manipulation of that card offers is very, very important for a lot of our combos. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's just, it, it can set up the graveyard as well by discarding things like Dendon Daiko Duke, which are much more useful in the grave than they are in the hand. So now into the so the additional extenders. Activation requirements are even harder to meet, but they do add greatly to the overall power level of our plays and build upon the plays that our starters and superior extenders uh, will create. So Tempest, this is a card I see, again, very few speedroid lists uh, playing. This card has been in my list and deck profiles before, uh, has been took out and then put back in, um, just because it's a really good recurrable uh, boss monster, not really boss monster, but recurrable card that you can use to, to good effect in this deck. It gives a really good target for your horse stilts uh, if all the resources are not available. Um, and it's just a recurrable monster that you can use for either Link Fodder uh, or you can use it to synchro with. And it does help to put on damage later in uh, previous turns, uh, following turns, I should say, because sometimes your uh, first turn boards, and this is just things I've heard and seen from around the speedway community um, here on YouTube, but uh, this deck, and I do agree with this statement, is it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a turn three deck because your turn one boards oftentimes aren't the greatest. You're not putting up four or five negates for sure. Um, it's just that what you put up uh, needs to hold off for their turn, uh, their, their first turn. And once you're able to go for turn three, you already have so much set up. Um, you know, you have cards like Speed Recovery in the Grave ready to help extend uh, and to push more. You have uh, the Horse Stilts in Grave, right? same thing. So uh, Tempest sort of falls under that same category. Uh, then we have one double yo-yo. I'm only playing one because this card is literally only needed off of the Rubber Band play. You don't need it in any other situation. You're never going to draw this card in your opening hand and be able to normal it and make its effect live immediately unless you open Foolish Burial. Um, but uh, Double Yo-Yo, uh, again, I, I, I've tried, I, I have tried and thought about doing builds of playing only one Stilt and Yo-Yo, but Stilt has much more value uh, as a starter card uh, than Yo-Yo does, obviously. Uh, and, and Stilt does much more than just being a starter card, as I've talked about. Uh, it being a uh, hand fixer in some cases when you don't get the optimal cards off of your rubber band shooter. Um, so double yo-yo, very important combo piece that we need uh, to be able to revive things from the grave. It's sort of an altair or a, 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 a wolf bar, whatever you want to call it. Um, but again, uh, a, a superior extender or an additional extender, and I would only play one just for those reasons. Uh, the graveyard setup is hard, and you're really only getting it off your rubber band shooter. Dundaiko Duke... Um, this card is great. I hate drawing it. That's why I don't want to play three. Drawing two of these cards is absolutely horrendous. Uh, so I think two is a good number. Um, I think two is a fine number. Uh, even drawing b multiples is, is not great. Um, but you banish from the graveyard to summon a speedway tuner from your hand or grave. Um, except itself. So you do have to keep that in mind. Um, getting this to the graveyard off of something like the shooter itself or foolish burial. Um, or even uh, discarding it from your hand off one for one. Um, or getting it out of deck uh, via Take Time Borg and then linking it off or synchroing with it to get it in the grave to make more plays. Uh, so again, this card uh, does require a bit of setup, but is, is important to the strategy overall. Uh, two Red-Eyed Die, uh, a good level one tuner we can get out again via one for one uh, or Take Time Borg, and the level manipulation is incredible because at least it can help turn us, or any of our other non-tuner speed rides into a level six to be able to get into Fast Dragon or Clearwing. Uh, Pot of Avarice for resource recursion. Uh, Foolish Burial, um, 
Its activation requirement is easy, but with this particular deck, the role this card serves is to get things like Dendaiko Duke into the graveyard to ultimately hope you have a, a tuner set up somewhere else to continue to extend. Otherwise, this card isn't going to do too much, uh, but that's why I like pairing it with Tempest, because at least if you do have some uh, ways to get access to Tempest, or at least summon it, you know, you can get uh, directly to it via Foolish Burial, which is nice. Um, so yeah, that's it for the additional extenders. Now into our defensive cards, three called by the grave. Uh, we do have a very uh, fragile plays. Um, the worst thing I could think of is your rubber band shooter getting ghost ogred. Um, that's absolutely horrendous. Uh, DD Crow hurts this deck quite a bit because a lot of the graveyard effects are trying to resolve. Um, or Yo-Yo targeting something like uh, Terror Top. If Terror Top gets DD Crowed, you're going to have a very, very hard time. Um, and Ash in general just hurts a lot of our, our starting plays like uh, Sting or Marble Machine. So the protection from Call By is, is welcomed. Um, not perfect, obviously, but I think it's I think it's warranted. Uh, our one engine requirement, Sting the Poison, uh, or st Pin the Bullseye, not Sting the Poison. Uh, again, the only reason we play this card is to search it off of uh, the, sting the Sting the Poison. And the nice thing is, if you draw this card, um, you know, you can still use it. Even if you draw it with uh, Sting the Poison. That's the nice thing. You don't need to have to, like, search this out to be able to summon it. If you draw both of them in conjuncture, you know, you can normal it and then special it and do your play as normal. Um, and then two placeholder cards here. It's usually just one. Uh, but Into the Void, again, we're just making our deck as consistent as possible. Uh, obviously, this card a lot more versatile and forgiving as far as the activation requirements are concerned. Play it whenever. This card, if you top deck it, it will suck. But you need that draw power. You need that consistency in this deck. Um, or else you're just not going to have very uh, good good outcomes in your turns. Um, so going into the extra deck now, uh, that's it for the main deck breakdown. Going into the extra deck, we have two copies of the Rubber Band Shooter. This card is phenomenal. Hands down, uh, I've seen some lists that don't play this card, uh, which I, I guess in some cases uh, is okay, but uh, I highly disagree. Uh, rubber Band Shooter is fantastic. Uh, it, it's single-handedly help set up uh, a bare minimum uh, a synchro play at least which is not much in of terms in today's meta I wouldn't consider this deck a meta deck by any means uh, but at least giving you that bare minimum chance of setting up something uh, to interact with the opponent is just bare none very very important um, the additional normal summon uh, not even to mention it's a brilliant fusion what else could you uh, want in a card specifically for a deck like this obviously it could do a lot more um, but uh, you play so many normal summons in this deck, playing a Brilliant Fusion makes a lot of sense. So now we're going to go into the synchros here. There's quite a few synchros. Um, I'll start with these first, uh, these three here. Uh, the Martial Metal Marcher, uh, these High Speed Roid Puzzle, which I still haven't gotten my real copy yet, uh, and High Speed Roid Hagoita. Uh, these three cards here are mainly for, uh, and they really only solely exist, uh, I would say, uh, for Cosmic Blazar. Uh, and Stardust Warrior plays um, because they, they're very combo heavy um, and high speed roid puzzle I guess you could argue is only there uh, for its level because we have uh, you know seven here and five here seven plus five is twelve obviously that helps us get into blazar we need uh, you know a non-tuner or we need a tuner synchro plus two non-tuner synchro monsters to get into it metal marcher is nice because uh, the main combo I've seen is you go into this card uh, it revives when I die, and then you've already made this card, and this card brings itself back out of the grave, and then you're synchroing with this in any other level 3 to go into Puzzle to get into your Cosmic Blazar. It, it's a very underwhelming board of just ending on just Cosmic Blazar, but I gotta admit, it's pretty cool, it's a very fun combo, um, and in some cases, it may just be enough, depending on what they're playing. Um, but uh, it's great. Uh, these cards are basically just solely there for those extension purposes. Hagoita uh, and Marcher, I would say, are much more uh, useful overall because you can use these guys to help make Crystal Wing. This is level 5 to go in with any other level 3, like Dendendaiko Duke to get into Crystal Wing, etc., uh, etc. Et then you can, you know, Dendendaiko Duke to summon another tuner, then summon this out and make, like, uh, you know, something like the uh, the Charge Warrior, etc., etc. So they have a little bit more utility uh, than Puzzle. Puzzle, again, is just only mainly there for the, uh, the Cosmic Blazer. Then we have Charge Warrior. Uh, level 6s are pretty accessible here, and uh, sometimes uh, having access to one is nice because it could potentially allow you to top deck into uh, some of your very good extenders like Succession, uh, the Recovery, or just Monster Reborn. 
uh, Wind Pegasus at Ignister. Uh, this is new to Speedroids in general, uh, at least here in the physical TCG. During your main phase, you can destroy spell and traps your opponent controls up to the number of at Ignister monsters you control. So it's always pretty much going to be just one. Um, but it's nice because the extra deck has been very lacking uh, in back row removal. And the Wind Pegasus at Ignister offers that, but it also offers really good graveyard protection. But as another effect, uh, basically as if another uh, card or cards you control uh, is destroyed by battle or an opponent's card effect, while this card is on the field or in the graveyard, you can banish this card and then target one card your opponent controls, shuffle it into the deck, um, which is great. That's very, very good protection. Um, it's not protection really in the form of a negate, but it's still there as a really good form of protection. Um, I really do like it, especially if you're synchroing with this into Crystal Wing, uh, you're getting so much more value out of whatever just level 7 body you're using to get into Crystal Wing. Um, it's just great because even if you are just ending on a Crystal Wing and you made the Crystal Wing with this, you have, again, a little bit more uh, protection to work with going into that next turn. Uh, then here, moving on, uh, well, we got to finish the other level 7s, which are just the Fast Dragon. And the one now, one clear wing synchro dragon. I wanted to make room for the Stardust Warrior because I have have done combos where that has happened, where I'm making uh, the Warrior, where I'm, I'm a bit short on Blazar, um, but I have like Marcher and like Pegasus. And then I can just get into uh, the Warrior, which is great. Again, which having the, the graveyard protection from Ad Ignister there is nice. But Fast Dragon uh, and Clear Wing. Level 7 synchros are extremely accessible in this deck. Having them is important, but also having this one mainly because um, I feel like Fast Dragon is a bit better than Clear Wing currently because of the extra deck uh, negation, stopping Needle Fibers, Union Carriers, etc. Um, but Clear Wing is nice because, again, we can banish it off the Rubber Band Shooter to reveal a 4 and 3 from deck, mainly Yo-Yo and Terror Top, and then hopefully try to make our combo work from there. So that's he mainly exists just to get banished. Um, if you think the scenario calls for keeping Clear Wing in the deck, again, you can banish Fast Dragon because he is also a 7. Um, now moving into the 8s. Uh, and I also forgot uh, Chambra, but we'll go to that later. Uh, but two clear wing or crystal wings. Um, again, uh, in case you want to have banished to get two level fours, uh, the option is there. But you can make multiple crystal wings in a deck like this. It has been done. And crystal wing is probably your best easily accessible synchro in the deck. Um, obviously, Blazar could be considered better. Same thing with Stardust Warrior, but they're not as accessible as Crystal Wing. Uh, Crystal Wing is just generally all around uh, a really good card. Uh, Chambra here um, helps for OTKs. Uh, sometimes can come up as a level 5 to banish off Rubber Band Shooter, but the OTK factor of this card is incredible. Uh, it's basically a mini Boral Sword. Uh, then we have Kite Drake, uh, Field Wipe, uh, or just a, a skill drain for the entire field. So this card is, is incredible. It's not even for the entire field. Um, it negates the effects of all face-up cards your opponent controls. So it's a very good board-breaking card uh, to get into. And last but not least, uh, Stardust Warrior and Cosmic Blazer Dragon. These cards take very long combos to get into, um, but in some cases, uh, it could probably win you the, the game outright. Blazar is nice in the fact that when you use its negation, any negation that it, you're using, whichever three effects, um, it removes itself from the field to protect it, so you basically guarantee it can come back uh, during your next turn. Uh, and Stardust Warrior, again, is another option I, I wanted to have in case you were just short of Blazar, uh, and wanted to go into something like this. But basically, for those that don't know what this card does, it basically says, during either player's turn, if your opponent uh, would special summon a monster or monsters, you can tribute this card and negate the summon if you destroy that monster or monsters. During the end phase, if this effect was activated this turn and was not negated, you can special summon this card from your graveyard. If this card is destroyed by battle, or if this face of card you control leaves the field because of an opponent's card effect, you can special summon a level 8 lower warrior synchro monster from your deck. Um, this is treated as a synchro summon. So that last effect, not going to come up too often, but it's basically like a, a, a judgment uh, if you will, um, or a solemn warning. Uh, but then Blazar Dragon, yes, for those who don't know, uh, basically must be synchro summon and cannot be special by other ways. You can banish this card until the end phase to activate one of these quick effects. When your opponent activates a card uh, or effect, negate the activation if you do destroy that card. When your opponent would special summon a monster or monsters, negate the summon. And if you do, destroy that monster or monsters. When your opponent's monster declares an attack, negate the attack, then end the battle phase. So this card does a whole lot. Very versatile card, just hard, very, very hard to get into. So yeah. That's it uh, with the look uh, of the extra deck, the extra deck run through. Now we'll talk about side decking specifically. Again, I'll put up a mock side deck on the screen. Into the Void is a card that could easily come out. Uh, one or maybe all three copies of Call by the Grave, depending. Uh, Pot of Avarice, easy side out. Same thing with Foolish Burial. And if you wanted to go so far, you could also drop Tempest as well. One for one, not super crucial to the strategy, so that could also go out. And um, one other thing, I guess. 
uh, you could also probably side out is uh, maybe maybe a copy of speed lift but that's probably about it maybe both copies of speed lift um, if you really wanted to um, but those are those are the cards I, I typically would side out I think that's that's all fine uh, and dandy right there um, everything else is just uh, very very important engine requirements uh, or just overall for the deck uh, snowball I guess you could drop one considering uh you know what, whatever side deck cards you need if you're playing against very heavy combo you need dark Willers, you need nibiru's you need evenly matched um you know goes and match i find is a very very good side deck card you could even main it if you wanted to because again everything in the main and extra deck is win so goes and does not conflict in any way shape or form um i guess you could try and maybe play rivalry too uh, since the majority of your things are machines, but you know some of your best monsters which are clear wing and crystal wing and blaze are their dragons So that can conflict but again uh, The goes and match very very good twin twisters could also be cosmic cyclones uh, You could even main deck one cosmic cyclone and uh, and drop into the void This card does not have to be played. I just like it for the added consistency So yeah, that's gonna do it for this deck profile for speed rides here in May of 2020 Thank you guys so much for watching uh, again, please consider checking out Imperium Duelist, my link to TCG Player, or hitting that join button down below. And as always, guys, when it goes sign out, we'll see you guys in the next one. Of course, lastly, a special thanks to Academic Thick, Travis Harris, and Zorus for being my Divine Level channel members here on YouTube. I appreciate your guys' generous support uh, to help making videos like these possible on a regular basis. So thank you again for your generous support.